This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More on that later in the video. Experiment time. Today I'm going to compare making a sourdough brioche with melted butter and making one where the butter is kneaded into the dough. Is it possible to make a brioche with melted butter? Hi, I'm Soon, and I'm a food geek. Today I'm testing if it's possible to make a sourdough brioche with melted butter instead of kneading it in, which is the commonly accepted way. I already tested this a while back, for, but for a regular sourdough bread. If you didn't watch that, I'm linking it in the card above. What we're told is that if we use melted butter in brioche dough, the dough will get too soft and sticky, and also the texture will suffer. But will it though? I'll make the exact same bread with the exact same composition. One made with melted butter, the other one where the butter is softened and then kneaded into the dough, as we're told it should be. We'll look at how the dough reacts and what it means for shaping and the crust and the crumb of the final product. Is there really a good reason for kneading? Because the bread gods know that it takes an insane amount of time to knead in the butter. And ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that! Squarespace is a platform that lets you easily build your own presence on the web. Maybe you want to build a blog for all your sourdough recipes, or maybe you're launching your own micro bakery. You get almost unlimited options in how your site should work. There's blogging features built in to share recipes, photos, and videos. You can categorize, share, and schedule your posts to make your content work for you. Squarespace has modern templates for almost any subject, and they look sleek and professional no matter what device your users use, be it on Windows, Mac, mobile phone, or tablet. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com foodgeek to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. This is a highly enriched bread, about 35% eggs, 15% milk, 12% sugar, and a whopping 33% butter. The inoculation is high because it can be hard to get enriched doughs to rise, so it's 40%. When you want to make an enriched dough with sourdough starter, it's very important to use it around the starter's peak, so that the baked bread won't be sour at all. Otherwise, it's not too hard to make, you just need the time. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider becoming a Patreon. Until the end of November, I'm running a special on a yearly membership where you get two months for free. Thank you. Those were the words. This is the experiment. This is an experiment, not a recipe. If you'd like to make a sourdough brioche, I'm leaving a link for my recipe for my blueberry swirl sourdough brioche bread in the description. You can drop the blueberry filling and you'll get a result very similar to this. First, I mix everything but the butter. When the dough is starting to come together, I add the melted but cooled butter. This is a relatively dry dough, so I dump it out on the counter and knead it. Once it's completely kneaded, I do some slap and folds to develop the gluten. Then 
Then I put it in a bulking container and leave it until the other dough is done. For the other dough, I mix everything together and I knead it until it's developed. Then I knead in the softened cubed butter, little by little.
this took an unreasonably long time. After it's done, I put it in the bulking container and put both in my proofer set to 30C86F. My kitchen has gotten pretty cold over the last couple of days, so using a proofer is essential. I let it proof for four hours. It doesn't seem to have grown much, but I'm confident that it's fermented. So I grab both those and shape them and put them into a greased pan for the final proof. cover them with some clinch film and put them back in the proofer. About three hours later, they've grown to double the size, so they're ready to bake. I've already heated my oven to 200C, 390F about half an hour before because I could tell they were almost ready to bake. Then I make an egg wash with one whole egg and a tablespoon of milk. I mix it up very thoroughly. Then I glaze both breads with the egg wash. And then I put them in the oven. They're supposed to bake for about 60 minutes, but about 40 minutes in, they're both starting to get very brown, so I cover them with some foil. After 60 minutes, I check the internal temperature and the bread is not completely done. After five minutes, they're ready, so I take them both out and put them on a wire rack in the pan. I let them cool for 15 minutes and then I remove them from the pan to cool completely. They're looking very nice, but they could have taken a bit more time to ferment, maybe 30 minutes more just to temper the oven spring. Let's have a look at the crumb of these two breads. First, the one with the melted butter. Very nice and pretty even, just like you'd want in your brioche bread. Then the one where the butter's kneaded in. Well, that's looking great too. Actually, they look very similar. Let's do a side by side. And now it's time for a sniff and taste test. I start with the one with the butter kneaded in. Mmm. <laughs> Smells wonderfully rich and buttery. The crust is extra intense in butter flavor. 
Let's try this other one. Mmm. Damn. This smells exactly the same. Rich and full of butter. And the crust is great too. Mmm, butter. Let's try to taste them. Mmm, that is wonderful. Tender crumb and the super crumbly crust. Just what you could hope for in your brioche bread. And then the one with melted butter. Wow, they're completely the same. Oh, that's so yummy. So that's very interesting. It doesn't seem to make any difference. If I hadn't labeled the two loaves, I would not have known which one was made which way. That means using melted butter is not only feasible, but also the logical way to incorporate butter in an enriched dough, just for the time saving alone. I hope you learned something today. See you next time.